This is Degaris Masculist MGTOW Flyers, that is two, three page essays on the themes of masculism and MGTOW, written by and read aloud by Prof. Dr. Hugo Degaris. This is flyer number 364, entitled Sound Bites for Media Masculists. Description. This flyer presents the core masculist arguments in soundbite format to be used in either mainstream media appearances or to hurl back at feminazis in public meetings. Uh, flyer itself. Sound Bites for Media Masculists by Prof. Dr. Hugo de Garris. Email profhugodegarris at yahoo.com. Website profhugodegarris.wordpress.com. This flyer provides a ve the very essence of masculist ideas, suitable for use as sound bites on the media by well informed, articulate masculists. Or, at public meetings when some MFB, that's monoconscious feminazi bigot, sounds off against men, who needs to be floored by a short, very sharp, verbally aggressive attack by a masculist in the audience. Imagine in the fairly near future, given that masculist ideas are spreading exponentially, that you are on a panel for a t radio or TV program broadcast by the mainstream media explaining what masculism is to an audience who knows almost nothing about the subject. You only have, for example, five to ten minutes to make your case. So you need to be able to lay out the core ideas of masculism in soundbite format, in pithy, memorable statements that an ignorant audience can take home with them. Alternatively, imagine you are in a public talk or discussion with feminist panelists and one of them launches into a misandrous diatribe which annoys the hell out of you as a well-informed, articulate, verbally aggressive masculist. So you stand up and harangue her out of the room, crushing her MFB mentality and being so effective and so devastating that the majority of the audience agrees with you, that is, you carry the day. But to be able to do that, you'll need to have your masculist ducks in a row so that in a few short minutes, you can slam back at the MFB with the essence of masculist ideas that astounds the audience with their force and their logic. In either case, what might you say? Question mark. Here is what I would say. Quote. What is masculism? Firstly, the word itself. It's the obvious male equivalent of the word feminism, that is, men's lib. What do men have to be liberated from? The essence of masculism is that it's primarily a rebellion by men against being man slaves of women, that is, against working for women. It was men who liberated women, that is, from household drudgery. It was men who gave women, in brackets, who don't invent anything, build anything, invent, create anything, in brackets, the contraceptive pill, household gadgets, higher education, modern medicine, giving women a life expectancy well into the 80s. Today's women now have reliable contraception, so choose to have typically zero, one or two kids, so have a career window of about half a century. The masculists point the finger at women and tell them in very strong moral terms. Now that women can work, they must work. Anything else is man slavery and hence a moral abomination. Masculism forces women to grow up, to take responsibility for their own lives by bothering to get a career competent education that in today's world, three quarters of young women at age 16 don't. Such women who do get a career competent education are labelled FIPS, 
by the masculists, that is, financially independent persons. The opposite of a FIP is the masculist label fluffy, based on the word fluff, with its connotations of being light, not serious, not responsible, not adult, not career competent, not FIP. Fluffies are the enemies of the masculist, seen as vermin, that is, immoral, parasitic, manslaving vermin, to be wiped out. To masculists, manslavery is slavery. Slavery rouses passions. For example, look at the root cause of the US Civil War. Slavery is a war issue, and the masculists are at war against the fluffies, aiming to wipe them out. Masculists effectively annihilate fluffies by forcing them to rot on the shelf, shunned by masculists who refuse to give them their sperm. A fluffy can only be a fluffy if she can get her financial claws into some gullible manslave. But thanks to the masculists and MGTOWs, that is, men going their own way, who refuse to marry, reject paternity, and spend their money on themselves, close brackets, the supply of such gullible manslaves is drying up, as the masculists and MGTOWs tell young men not to marry not to have kids, because the hated fluffy feminists, in all their hypocrisy, have taken over the divorce courts and made divorce so toxic for men that young men increasingly choose to live the MGTOW lifestyle. Masks see the fluffy feminists as hypocrites, because these women behave as feminists in the parliaments, pushing for equal rights with men, but as fluffy parasites in the divorce courts, thus rejecting equal obligations with men. By ripping a divorcing father's kids away from him with a 90% probability, giving his house to his fluffy ex-wife, half of his stuff to her, forcing him to pay child support to kids he'll barely see, and if the ex-wife is a real fluffy, he may be forced to pay her alimony for life, with no legal nor moral obligation on her to fip up, that is, to become a fip, so that she remains a parasite of him after the divorce, the way she was before the divorce. This acceptance by the fluffy feminists of equal rights with men, but rejection of equal obligations with men, is seen as sheer hypocrisy by the masculists, who treat fluffy feminists with utter contempt, spitting in their faces. Masculists tell young women that if they don't fit up, they will be forced into babylessness, since the quality young men, who are the first to go maskless due to their superior intelligence, increasingly refuse to give these young women their sperm, preferring to live the MGTOW lifestyle. Thus the masculists are forcing young women to choose between giving up their privileges in the divorce courts or being babyless. Masculists put strong moral pressure on young women to vote with men for the men faring of the gender laws, especially in the divorce courts, and for the legislation of the PARA, that's P-A-R-E-R, -E Paternity Rejection Right. Masks hurl abuse at fluffy feminists who fight against the para, the non-existence of which is the greatest sexual discrimination that exists, that is not against women, but against men. Masks are tired of the illogicality and ignorance of the feminists. For example, the feminists are always harping on the fact that women have to live in a patriarchy, that is, a world dominated by men. The masculists have little patience with this feminist attitude and point out to women that it was women who largely created the patriarchy in the first place, since women have always had a monopoly over reproduction. It is the woman who decides which man will ejaculate in her to make her pregnant, so women have been sexually selecting the qualities in men that were to women's advantage. Women have been sexually selecting men who were taller, bigger, stronger, fiercer, and smarter than women. Women who chose men who were taller, bigger, stronger, and fiercer than them, because such men would be better able to defend them against attack by other men, especially by male warriors of enemy tribes. Women preferred to mate with men smarter than them, since smarter men made better hunters, so were more sexploitable by women. This is the end of part one.